Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to show you a couple of really cool teams you can use for this Bats in the Belfry World event. I'm going to show the typical no mythic option like I usually do, but now I'm also going to start showing a mythic option for those players with the troops. Now, either way, it is really important you grab your rewards immediately for this world event. And the reason is, due to different time zones, your guild may have started earning the rewards. And one of those rewards is the Token of Darkness. Now, when you get this, the first evolution is to a Badge of Darkness. 40% spell damage for all troops in the current event, ultimately going to the Medal of Darkness, with a whopping 160% spell damage for all troops. So, really good. And remember, you can stack them as well during this event. When you get more of them, you can actually have multiple Medals of Darkness for absolutely obscene damage. So make sure you collect these, because when you buy a couple of tiers from the shop as well, you're probably going to have enough to evolve it absolutely immediately. Let's get an Orb of Clans. That's pretty good. So here we go. Let's evolve those medals. Kaboosh! A Medal of Darkness already. Thank you very much. We'll be equipping that in a moment. But from the shop, make sure you grab at least Tier 1 and Tier 2 for this. But Tier 1, really good. You get the Potion... Of enchantment, very good indeed. Enchant all allies at the start of battle for this event only. Tier 2, you get some more cool stuff, more tokens, and the potion of explosion. Explodes four gems at the start of battle, very useful indeed. And at tier 3, you get some more shards, some more troops, a potion of rejuvenation, more tokens, and other stuff. And obviously, you can go further if you so desire. Right, so let's take a look at the scoring system and the teams. There are six battles you can encounter during this event. Icy Doombat, Venomous Doombat, Fairy Doombat, Cave Doombat, Dark Doombat, and Crimson Bat. The battles are randomly chosen, but they all have an equal chance of appearing on the map. Now, we earn Doombat wings during this, and basically all the enemies give just two Doombat wings, apart from Crimson Bat, that gives four Doombat wings. So just fight any of the others, but fight the highest level one you can, but always fight Crimson Bat when it appears. Each Doombat wing is worth 5 points. Battles will drop a variable number of Doombat wings on average, about 1.18 times the base amount. As battles against the Crimson Bat get harder, they will increase the amount of Doombat wings it gives by 25%. So always fight the Crimson Bat when you can. Right, so I've simplified that scoring system to make it easier to see how many points you get per battle. And now let's uh, take a look at the teams. This is the first no mythic option, and the first thing you'll probably notice is I'm not in a undead class. And this is for a reason I'll just go over it in a minute. But we can have the Ghost Queen, really good. All undead allies start with 50% mana, and also steals 7 mana from an enemy, then steals magic plus 3 life boosted by purple gems. So really good, that is true damage effectively while boosting up her own life as well as taking away mana from the enemy. Really good. So we want to get the true damage option going on this. We want to keep it true damage if we can. Crimson Bat, two of these if you can. Dealing magic plus one true damage to all enemies and gaining life at the same time. Regarding the weapon, we want to keep this true damage theme going. So Crypt Keeper is a really good option for this. Death mark an enemy and then deal magic plus one true damage to all enemies below them, boosted by enemy death marks. So we'll cast that on the top troop when we can. To get that true damage on all enemies below right so we got a really nice amount of true damage going here on all of these troops which is really cool and with the ghost queen given that 50 percent start on herself and the crimson bats we can be in a geomancer class for this we don't need to be in an undead class and there are advantages and i'll just go over those in just a second but you don't need a mana generator for this some you know you might have gone for one of these other weapons which either creates gems or explodes gems or something but there's no need to so we got a 50% start on all of these. We got a potion of enchantment because of the tier one. And we got the potion of explosion because of tier two. These troops are going to get charged up quickly anyway, so you don't really need managing for this. It's going to happen anyway. All right, regarding the class, I'm just going to go over why I really like a Geomancer for this. Like some people may jump into a Death Knight because it's an undead class, but there's a few things I just don't like about it. Like Death Mark all enemies when I die. You don't want to die. Immunity to Death Mark is good. But as you'll see in a minute, we'll have that in Geomancer anyway. So that pretty much negates all the traits absolutely immediately. And there's nothing too special in here either. I mean, Vanguard is quite nice, as is Razor Armor. Again, stuff like this. Savior, when an ally dies, bury another ally. You don't want stuff to be beneficial when you die, which is why I'm not over keen on this, on this class. Swift Curse can be handy though, certainly. But again, stuff like Unholy Blessing. 
all undead gain two armor and magic when an ally dies, making this class not very good for this at all for me. If you're going to have an undead class, if you wanted to be in an undead class, then I would certainly rather go in Necromancer. Still an undead class, but it's just got better traits for me. Gain one magic for each purple ally is decent, but um, other stuff is just good. Anti-magic sphere, again, again, we don't need that, so you can have extra blue or extra purple you can be stealthy you can still have swift curse and you can get rising shadows seven percent chance to assassinate the last enemy when another enemy dies that is any enemy so any kill you've got a seven percent chance of just wiping someone out immediately so if you want an undead class i would prefer that one but i'll show why i'm going in a geomancer overall uh reduce reduce damage from skulls by 50 percent is really good we get a 50% start with mana anyway, so we don't need to be an undead to get that. Impact is really good, inflicting stun when enemies deal skull damage. Anti-magic sphere reduces damage from spells by 20% is nice. Gain three magic at the start of battle is going to increase the damage of our damage to all true damage weapon because we don't need mana source because we've got it anyway. Rock solid, gain a barrier when matching brown gems, which we do to charge up our ghost queen. Tree of Knowledge, gain enchant when matching green gems, which we do for our team as well. And Fortitude, immune to stun, poison, disease, death mark, lycanthropy, and devour. So we're immune to death mark from this class anyway. Some of the benefits were in those other ones. Uh, we get anyway in Geomancer, so that's why I like it for this. Regarding the banner, we can be in the Abyssal banner, plus two purple, plus one red, minus one yellow. But if you have the troops and want to go for the mythic option, there's a, a couple of nice options here particularly like Morthani Morthani's darkness stealing life from four random enemies and summoning Morthani's well if you got her or just a popper in place of one of the crimson bats and you are absolutely a way to go and you can keep the same banner at the same time because we still don't use a yellow so Morthani's darkness really good for this was going to work really well with this team as is the grey king very nice indeed and still all obviously getting that 50% mana start but let's Start with his team and see how it does. Always equip the medal because you want to get that nice boost. So we're going to pop it in the middle there just because it looks nice and tidy. So medal of darkness, 160 spell damage, increase lovely chubbly. Let's bash up a few undead things. Collect those wings as proof apparently. It's all a bit grim. So you can see we've got the 50% mana start. We've already nearly charged all our troops. This is why you don't really need a out one out mana generator for this. But I mean, obviously on the later levels when you have to cast more than once, it possibly may may help, but overall I don't think it's gonna be that necessary because it can, it's gonna be a quick team anyway. And all that true damage. And because we get the the boost as well, that really nice boost, 160% spell damage. People are just going to die. This is going to wipe out three enemies below. And I was going to say the Ghost Queen will finish them off, but they died anyway. Right, so let's um, just take it on these Doom Bats of one version or another. Doom Bats all over the place. Another Battle Raven. That's rather nice. Right, so we'll skip forward, I think, because um, as you can see, it's very fast and no need for a mana generator, especially in these early stages. Um, anybody increased level yet? Nope. Let's take on a cave doing that, I suppose. And we'll jump forward a bit. See how it does when things get a little bit harder. Set the actress to the bishop. Hey, look at that. Just both of them crimson bats were up at the same time. That's like an awful amount of damage. Absolutely straight away. Because it's not the fact that we've got two of them up and they do a lot of damage anyway. But we're obviously getting that 160% spell damage increase as well, which is... In my case, like, oh, wait, way over 100 damage each. More like 150 damage each. Absolutely nutty. Right, let's get that for our bat. Yeah, let's skip forward a bit. No need for all this malarkey. Well, I jumped forward a little bit, but yeah, this team is still just one-shotting everything into absolute oblivion. They are being kabooshed out of there in absolutely no time at all. See, I didn't have to do anything then. Just that 50% start. On the troops, with that potion of enchantment and explosion, really, really good. Just super fast. True damage all over the place. 
There we go. Go screens ready, but you can actually get it ready for the bat with just one collection and kaboosh them all out of there. Right, well, I've jumped forward a little bit more, but I'm starting to run out of schedules. But yeah, this team is still absolutely flying. I've just one shot at everything so far. Obviously, that will depend upon your uh, magic level, whether that works as fast for you. But yeah, this Crimson Bat is just doing an absolute job on these whole things. Like, um, can swap in more Tharnese Darkness, like I said, for a mythic option for that second Crimson Bat. But yeah, two of them bats are going to be absolutely lethal anyway. A bit more Tharnese would make it even more so because she steals life at the same time. Really cool. So just, yeah, get red. Get your bat ready. Suck the life out of them suckers. That was another nice quick battle. Yeah. Like that active le leeching, whatever it was, I can see why, you know, some people might think that's a good, good pick, but I think it generates purple as well or something, which means the purple was going to be wasted on a team like this with two bats. We don't use purple. Obviously, Morthani would benefit from some of that if you had Morthani in the team, but the act of leeching does normal damage, so I didn't like it for that reason either. I don't like to mix normal damage when the rest of the team is doing true damage. This seems a bit of a waste, even if it does generate mana. But this team, I'm really liking it. Absolutely romping through. Right, let's make this the last one, because we can see this works absolutely blindingly well. Let's do it that way to get some extra red and everybody will be dead yes absolutely awesome stuff just a quick note if you missed it at the beginning you can use exactly the same team for the underspire team so no need to post an underspire team video today because you can use exactly the same team as this one the only main difference will be obviously you're not getting that massive damage increase but the fundamental way the team works will be exactly the same but you do have to collect the mana at the beginning of it because obviously no potion of enchantment with this but the idea will still be exactly the same, 50% start on everyone and quick damage from your Crimson Bats or your Morthani's Darkness, whatever you prefer. Right, so there it is, there's the video. If you enjoyed it, found it useful or helpful, be really cool if you bash that like and subscribe button, it really does help. But most of all, thanks for watching. I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.